When someone uses data, whose interest does it serve? Whose should it serve? Often, organizations have unbalanced incentives to use personal information solely for their own interest, to the detriment of individuals or even society as a whole. Much has been written about the surveillance economy and how organizations capitalize off of measuring the online and real-world behaviors of individuals. We, all of us, are being observed and quantified to new extremes with both potential benefits and new potential for harm. The use of observational insights is not a new phenomenon. The course of human progress has been built on the scientific method, which relies on observation and quantitative measurement, the measurement of reality itself, the physical world, and certainly individual persons. For example, early healthcare depended on noticing that when someone ate one thing, they were ill, and then another thing made them feel better. Early agriculture meant noticing patterns of stars and the resulting changes in seasons, seeing the trend and taking advantage of the pattern. Modern data protection laws give rights to individuals through a personal sovereignty or decision-making power regarding the various facts and statistics that refer to them. But in giving individuals the protection of the state or a right of ownership over observations about themselves, are we in fact giving them a sovereignty over a slice of reality or the ability to control how others may perceive the world? How far should that ability reach? Analogies about data tend to refer to it as a resource for science or industry such as oil or electricity. I find it useful to think of data in the analogy of shared spaces as a new commons with both the benefits and the tragedies that comparison implies. Historically, anyone in a community could potentially access or use a common resource like grazing land and no one can exclusively own it. This means the resource could be abused in ways that harm people because no one has direct responsibility. Yet another problem that exists today in the context of data. In the past, we as a global society have had to come together and decide what should be a common resource and what could legitimately be claimed by only one party. At the Global Privacy Assembly, as we look out the windows, we're struck by views of the sea. The oceans are a global resource for transportation, aquaculture, or other shared purposes. When faced with the question of how much of the ocean a country can claim, early modern nations judged that the distance a weapon could reach was a reasonable measure of control of that slice of the common ocean. The distance that a cannonball could be fired from the coastline at the time was about the distance to the horizon. Setting aside the merits, this consensus, humans needed similar agreements when we began to regularly explore and inhabit new spaces, such as the only continent without an indigenous population, Antarctica. In that case, a treaty system helped establish a consensus on expectations and norms for how the region may be used for scientific research purposes. Threats from militarization and zero-sum competition have been largely avoided to allow access and progress. In a similar way, the Outer Space Treaty established an agreement that one group cannot claim ownership over celestial objects, and instead we should consider the use of these resources for all humankind. We are fast approaching if we have not already passed the point where that conversation is needed in terms of data, algorithms, inferences, profiles, and other uses of observational technology. A claim of exclusive ownership or control limits the ability to use a resource for the common good. It limits the ability to benefit all of humankind. Unlike a commons, even specific data are usually reusable resources. They are not necessarily consumed when they are used. Therefore, there is the potential that knowledge creation and research could continue to make use of personal information in a non-exclusive way that allows multiple parties or even our communities as a whole to benefit from the use. But that same personal data 
can be used indefinitely to harm other individuals over and over. As representatives of the world's data protection authorities, we have a responsibility to lead this conversation. We must come together to decide how far the cannon shot of an individual's claim on personal information can reach. Is it time for a treaty system establishing conventions on data? Can there be a cannon shot rule for data? Perhaps it is appropriate to ask this question here in Bermuda, where you are never far from shores or historic forts. As a global privacy assembly, we should begin thinking through this process of international consensus. Let's start by asking, what do we agree on? How can we ensure that a potential use of personal information is trustworthy and fair? And how can we make sure that technologies serve all humankind? Thank you.